seize power or seize the factory by Amadeo Bordega. The working class disturbances of the past few days in Liguria have seen yet another example of a phenomenon that for some time now has been repeated with some frequency and that deserves to be examined as a symptom of a new level of consciousness among the working masses. Instead of abandoning their jobs, the workers have, so to speak, taken over their plants and sought to operate them for their own benefit, or more precisely, without the top managers being present in the plant. Above all, this indicates that the workers are fully aware that the strike is not always the best weapon to use, especially under certain circumstances. The economic strike, through the immediate harm it inflicts on the worker himself, derives its utility as a defensive weapon for the worker from the harm the work stoppage inflicts on the industrialist by cutting back the output which belongs to him. This is the state of affairs under normal conditions in the capitalist economy, when competition and price cutting force a continual increase in production itself. Today, the profiteers of industry, in particular the engineering industry, are emerging from an exceptional period in which they were able to amass enormous profits for a minimum of effort. During the war, the state supplied them with raw materials and coal, and at the same time acted as sole and reliable purchaser. Furthermore, through its militarization of factories, the state itself undertook to impose a rigorous discipline on the working masses. What more favorable conditions could there be for a fat profit? But now these people are no longer disposed to deal with all the difficulties arising from shortages of coal and raw materials, from the instability of the market and the factitiousness of the working masses. In particular, they are not disposed to put up with modest profits which are roughly the same or perhaps a bit below their pre-war level. This is why they are not worried by strikes. Indeed, they positively welcome them, while mouthing a few protests about the absurd claims and insatiability of the workers. The workers have understood this, and through their action of taking over the factory and carrying on working instead of striking, they are making it clear that it is not that they have no wish to work, but that they have no wish to work the way the bosses tell them to. They no longer, no longer want to be exploited and work for the benefit of the bosses. They want to work for their own benefit, i.e. in the interests of the working force alone. This new consciousness that is emerging more clearly every day should be held in the highest regard. However, we would not want it to be led astray by vain illusions. It is rumored that factory councils where they were in existence function by taking over the management of the workshops and carrying on the work. We would not like the working masses to get hold of the idea that all they need to do to take over the factories and get rid of the capitalists is set up councils. This would indeed be a dangerous illusion. The factory will be conquered by the working class, and not only by the workforce employed in it, which would be too weak and non-communist. Only after the working class as a whole has seized political power. Unless it has done so, the royal guards, military police, etc., in other words, the mechanism of force and oppression that the bourgeoisie has at its disposal, its political power apparatus, will see to it that all illusions are dispelled. It would be better if these endless and useless adventures that are daily exhausting the working masses were all channeled, merged, and organized into one great comprehensive upsurge aimed directly at the heart of the enemy bourgeoisie. Only a communist party should and would be able to carry out such an undertaking. At this time, such a party should and would have no other task than that of directing all its activity towards making the working masses increasingly conscious of the need for this grand political attack. The only more or less direct route to the takeover of the factory, which if any other route is taken, may never fall into their hands at all.